Hey, so um, I have to leave in 10 minutes to go pick up Matt from the train. And um, I know this is like, I don't want to make this channel like turn into the, I'm going to talk about Matt all the time channel. Cause I'm not going to actually. And I, I would prefer to stop talking about him, but um, just for the sake of being thorough, I've given a lot of details about everything else that's happened with us. But um, I wanted to also just sort of briefly mention some notable feelings that I've had since um, the day we met. It's very weird. Um, and I wanna, there's this story um, that it keeps reminding me of that and there's a short little part of it that I wanna read because it's so cool. Um, but two notable things have happened since I met Matt. First of all, the day after I met him, I'll link to the video that I made a couple days after I met him where I talked about how when we met in person, it just felt like I was meeting the right person or it, it felt like it was a done deal. I, I can't explain it, but um, the day after that, like for, for months now, maybe even longer, I've been having the hardest time concentrating at work. I don't know if it's coronavirus or what, it feels like it was before that, but like I just haven't been able to focus. It's like, I felt like I needed to be on high alert like I was gonna miss something or like if I got to into whatever I was, you know, I don't know, I just had this feeling like I couldn't afford to focus fully on anything. I just felt like I had to be here. It was kind of this empty feeling. I couldn't get, you know what? It was way longer than, it was way before coronavirus. It was uh, all the way through last year. Um, last summer, I remember feeling like this, like, like I was really bored because I couldn't get into anything. Like I couldn't even get into watching a TV show because there was just this like um, sense of being on, on, on alert. Like I just, I can't explain it. I couldn't concentrate on anything uh, because if I tried to, I would get this fight or flight feeling. Um, that's the best I can do to explain it. The day after I met Matt, that disappeared completely. Like I am like back to work, like doing, you know, um, it's a testament to how awesome my business is that I just haven't really had to work for like last year and a half, but um, I'm like kind of back into it again. And I'm uh, doing the same stuff that I was back in the day. And um, it's just been really weird that that was some strange side effect. Like I met him and all of a sudden it was just like this peace descended upon me which is another part of the reason why I really feel like this is something weird and magical. But this other thing has happened that is so strange, I'm not sure how to even explain it. It just keeps reminding me of this story, this little excerpt um, from this book called Only Love is Real by Brian Weiss, who is a psychiatrist or was a psychiatrist who accidentally started regressing people to past lives um, when he was doing hypnotherapy. And so he wrote the book, Many Lives, Many Masters, which if you haven't read that, you should go pick it up like today and spend your Corona Friday night um, with a uh, you know, glass of wine or something in this book. It's amazing. And then his third book is Only Love is Real, which is this amazing story. I've probably read this book once a year since I was 16. I don't know, it came out a long time ago but it's basically the story of how he had two clients at the same time coming to him for past life regression and they were rec like recounting the same lifetimes from different perspectives and finally he like put two and two together that he had these two people that didn't know each other um, that were like past life uh, like soulmates or you know father daughter um, lovers, that kind of stuff, and all these other lives. So this book's just amazing. It's awesome. Assuming it's true. It's supposedly a true story. I don't know. I just read this for the last time in December. And I just remember thinking like, I know that I have not met if I have somebody like that, if I have like a soulmate that I've spent other lifetimes with, I've never recognized that person in this life. I'm telling you, when I look into Matt's eyes, it's, it's, I know him from somewhere. It's crazy. Um, but so I wanted to read this little thing cause this is so cool. I love this story. Um, 
And it's, I don't know how else to explain kind of what I felt like has happened since I met Matt. Cause it's, it's whatever, let me just read it. After one of my workshops, a participant told me a marvelous story. From the time she was a little girl, if she let her hand hang over the side of her bed, another hand would lovingly take hers and she would be reassured no matter how anxious she was feeling. Oftentimes when her hand accidentally went over the bedside and the grasp surprised her, she would reflexively jerk back her hand and this always broke the embrace. She always knew when to reach for the hand and to feel comforted. There was of course no physical form under her bed. As she grew older, the hand remained. She married but never told her husband about this experience because it seemed so childlike. When she became pregnant with her first child, the hand disappeared. She missed her loving and familiar companion. There was no hand to take hers in that same loving way. Her baby was born a beautiful daughter. A little while after the birth, while lying in bed together, the baby took her hand. A sudden and powerful recognition of that old familiar feeling flooded her mind and her body. Her protector had returned. She cried with happiness and felt a great surge of love and a connection that she knew existed far beyond the physical. For some reason, that story, I just, I don't know. I've, I've thought of it often because it's so weird and cool. But um, I keep thinking about that story since I met Matt because it's like, you know, I've tried to dissect all this stuff on this channel. You know, I've had this huge drive my whole life to find this specific person. Um, and I kind of dissected all that this year and I, I, you know, figured out a whole bunch of parts of that desire that were not coming from what I think was a good place. And I kind of got to the point where I was like, I think I'm okay if this never happens. My life won't be meaningless. You know, I still, I know that my romantic fulfillment is a done deal, but even so, like, it, I want to be in this mental place where I'm okay with it. And I think I got there. Um, since I met Matt, it's like this hand story. It's like the thing that I was looking for, the, this thing that there was a drive towards has happened. Like it's been found. Like I, I've, I've been trying to articulate this to him, like when I talked to him about it and it always comes out awkwardly. Like if you decided to just disappear, it's not like that drive comes back and I continue looking for that thing. Like that drive that I felt was to find him. I'm sure of it. It's, it's like, it's like it was an, an imaginary thing that suddenly disappeared and is now in human form. Just like that hand story. I just keep thinking of the hand story. Um, so this is the weirdest thing ever. It's really cool. I don't know what it means because all I've ever had was this drive towards this thing um, without really knowing, you know, I don't know if it means we spend the rest of our lives together. I would imagine that, I don't know. The thing is, I don't know what that's, where that's coming from or what it's for. Um, I would imagine it's to be together. But the thing I know for sure is that the drive for that thing has, it's found, it's found the thing. So what happens now, I don't know. Um, but it's pretty cool. It's kind of cool feeling that that's gone because it's just kind of been something that's been with me my whole life. Um, you know, this sense that I hadn't found a thing I was looking for. I've never felt this way before. Um, it's beyond me. It's not even like, oh, I'm so in love. I found the right, it's not even that. It's like, it's just this weird thing that's like been um, brought into fruition or something. I can't explain it, but it's cool. Anyway, um, that will be, I think the last, th I think I've said what I have to say about the mat thing. I would like to just experience it now. Uh, I'd like to go experience him right now at the train station. So I just wanted to uh, share that thing. Um, many lives, many masters, only love is real, both by Brian Weiss, MD. He's got a bunch of other books um, that he's written about the same stuff and they're all awesome. But like those two are my favorite. Many lives, many masters was the first one. And I don't know if you're a romantic, especially if you don't feel like you've ever met your soulmate, like um, just, only love is real. I grab those two books, like literally drive to a bookstore. I'm sure they'll be in stock and just get them. And that should, that should cover most of your weekend and leave you in a more mystical and hopeful and I don't know,
excited place. If your thing is people, if you're single or whatever, I don't know. Um, it's pretty cool stuff. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Uh, have a good weekend. And um, I don't know. Hopefully I'll have something to say that doesn't have to do with my romantic life soon. <laughs>